I'm gonna drop some truth here. Do I trust wine competitions? Well, I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. The concept's are very simple. You put a bunch of wine professionals in a room, you put the wines in front of them, blind, so they can't see the producer. They all taste, they judge, they rate. The cream should rise to the top. The best wines should get gold medals, right? I think in general, wine competitions are supposed to be helpful for the consumer. It's supposed to weed out the good wines from the bad wine. In theory, yes, that should work, but... When surreptitiously given the same wine three times, only one in 10 of the judges at the California State Fair wine competition consistently awarded it the same medal. That video was created to go viral and obviously it did, but what they forgot to add is that in that same study indicated that even though individual judges lack some reliability, the overall panel does not. I did a search on can you trust wine competitions? I came up with wine competitions, are they a hoax? In the Journal of Wine Economics, auctioneer Bruce Kaiser tells us about the trials and tribulation of being a wine judge. Then you have one UK competition claiming that 70% of consumers are willing to spend more for an award-winning wine. So obviously there's a lot of confusion out there. To me, it's all about the quality of the judges and how the competition is run. However, it's a delicate balance because these wine competitions are a business too. They have to make money, so they have to have a reputation and producers have to be happy with sending wines there. I'm gonna drop some truth here. There are a lot of wine competitions all around the world and in general, the best wines, wines that have already found their market, don't need to submit to the competition. They have already established their market. There's already importers sweeping them up. That's not to say you can't find some fabulous wines. I judge in a number of competitions every single year and I've really come across some beautiful wines that I had never heard of before. A lot of wines in these competitions are wines from emerging wine regions or lesser known producers. The competitions that I've been most impressed with are those small niche competitions. I think the competition that impressed me the most was in Val d'Aosta. It was an extreme wines competition. The wines had to be grown either on steep slopes, on islands, or at extremely high elevations. In bigger competitions, you are going to find a lot of supermarket wines. Wines that are trying to stand out on the shelf with a nice piece of flair. That's why I'm really looking forward to going to Germany to judge in this competition because it's one of the biggest in Europe with 11,000 samples annually. I look forward to taking part in the competition, seeing if I can really trust the process. Okay, it's time for me to pack up and get out of here. Yeah, Mundusvini is a Grand International Wine Award, which is organized since 2001. In total, we have two competitions, spring tasting in February, summer tasting end of August, and in total we taste more than 12,000 wines a year. So this is the guy that recommended me, good Paul, he's the man. <laughs> yeah. I need you in my video so I can get to a million views. <laughs> try my best. <laughs> so here's how it works. Our panel had six tasters and Paul was the president. You get poured several flights of wines, about eight to 12 wines per flight, and they stick to a theme, like grape variety. At Mundus Vini, each panel tastes 40 to 60 wines per day. Okay, day one in the books. What did I like? I did like that the competition seemed a lot better organized than some of the small competitions. There were additional things we had to fill out, like flavor profile. They insert that information into a database to come up with a chart for producers and consumers. I thought that was really cool because in small competitions, all the little notes don't really matter. Just the final score matters. I also like in this competition, there's only three medals. A grand gold, really, really good. Gold, silver. There's not that bronze medal or the commended, the participation trophy, as I like to call it. It makes the medal actually worth something. Day two, I'm a little bit less jet lag. The eyes are starting to become white again instead of pink. <laughs> actually, we have these little sheets to see how we scored against uh, the, everybody else in our panel to see if we were good or not. First flight of the day is Rieslings. I'm pumped. 
So the hard thing I find when judging some of these competitions is knowing the wines, knowing the crowd. You're not scoring for yourself. You're scoring for people that are buying wines in supermarkets, maybe some low level shops. Since we just got done with a flight of Primitimos, AKA Zinfandels from the south of Italy, not wines that I'm gonna be drinking anytime soon. <laughs> just a hint of sweetness and a hint of residual sugar, big alcoholic, but not for me, but a lot of people are gonna love it. During the evening events of these competitions, I usually make a discovery or two, like today. I actually have to admit, I'm not a huge Sylvaner fan, but this is pretty solid. Usually Sylvaner's, they don't have a lot of fruit, but it's got some lime and lemon notes. That one was good. This one is excellent. It's the duty of the organizers to make sure they put on some good social events. And there's plenty of wine to go around. Just turn and smile. I need you to smile, Robert. Come on, just give me a smile. <laughs> Press trips, wine competitions, they gotta make sure they feed you well. Got some typical Palantine cuisine here. Pickled vegetables, some meat. I think in the south, especially in the wine growing regions, the foods actually can be pretty good. So yeah, I think Germany has the second most Michelin stars in the world behind France. <laughs> For long-term viewers of the channel, I got a treat for you. Maybe you'll recognize her. Hey, I'm Shereen Tan. Good to see you. Do you remember me? Okay, getting ready to start day three. I think I'm finally not jet lagged. I think my eyes are finally a little bit white again. So in my experience, certain grapes show a little bit better than others. I think Sauvignon Blanc is one of those because if you're tasting a lot of neutral white wine, Sauvignon Blanc's explosive and it can kind of trick you. Just got done with a flight of Saparavis, grape from Georgia, near and dear to my heart because that's where one of the countries where my wine career started. This grape shows pretty nice in competition. It's not because it doesn't get overly jammy, but there's subtle complexities there even though there were a few disagreements in the panel. Actually, the wine quality has been pretty darn good all morning today. Final day of judging. Going back to my roots here, we've got some Turkish flights, <laughs> some Bogusgeri or Kuzgozu, unique red grapes, and finishing up with Nebbiolo, one of my favorite grapes, one of the greatest grapes in the world. During the last day, our panel got some pretty darn good wines. So if I've ever questioned the quality of wines that are sent to competitions like this, on the Nebbiolo flight, I'm almost positive there are at least three Barolos in it. Super impressed with some of the Turkish wines. Changed a lot since the last time I was in the country. When wines score actually quite high, when you're getting high, high gold medals, I think the jury generally agrees. Let's see though, I want to blind taste some medal award winning wines. I had somebody just randomly pick five different wines. Here, let's see if these wines are really metal worthy. Let's start out with the white wines. The first one's really pretty. A little bit of white flower. Some of blonde grassiness is starting to come. Very fruity up front, really nice. I don't think for me this would not be a gold medal winner. Silver medal may be commended. Let's see what this is here. This is from Bartolino. <laughs> this doesn't even have a label yet. It's a sample. It won a gold medal. All for one so far. Let's check out this next wine. Well, we can see it's white. Very interesting. Grassy, complex, not a boring wine at all. I don't think that this is maybe kind of Italian. The nose on this already, for me, when I smell it, if I had in the competition, I would say gold. For me, full body texture, kind of like an 89, 90 point wine. So if it's a gold medal, then I would say, okay, good job on the competition. It is a gold, it's a, it's a Pinot Bianco from Friuli Venezia Giulia. I like Pinot Bianco, gold medal. I'm happy. Score another one for Pinot Bianco. You know I love the gray. Let's move on to the red, shall we? All right, this has plenty of oak up front. This is a, a consumer friendly wine. A lot of consumers are gonna like this. Oh, actually, some complexities are starting to come out. Okay, I didn't jump to conclusion. For me, not a gold medal winner. I think a lot of people would like it. I would maybe say silver. Uh, silver medal, I guess I'm close. Vateria La Viala, Rosso Toscana, biodynamic wine. Okay, silver, I guess I'm spot on. Second red smells like some kind of weird, maybe of Italian type crepe, smells really good. Dark fruits, it's a young wine, but it smells quite complex and rich. This wine at first, this is a young wine, and I can tell it's a good wine, because at first it was quite tight flavored when expressing themselves, but the length here, the wine really starts to explode on the mid palate and the finish, so if I was in a competition, I think that would separate it. I would say that this is a gold medal. Let's see if it is a gold medal. It's a silver medal. <laughs> wow, so now some judges missed out here. Uh, Ribera del Duero. Ah, so it's Tempranillo. 
Silver! I can see maybe during a competition if people were fatigued a little bit, the plainness up front might bore people, but to me the finish really stood out. I actually find myself, hot tip, liking cheaper Ribera del Dueros because they're a little bit more dialed back. Some of the more expensive ones are a little too oaky for me. Okay, let's check out this next red wine. Next red wine smells very traditional. This is Southern Italy to me. Unique, kind of piney, really unique, complex. It would stand out in a, judge, in a competition because it doesn't just smell like a boring red wine. All these wines here, I would say metal. This one, it was beyond the border. It'd be no metal or silver for me. Let's see what it is. If it's silver, I won't kill it. It's a near, I got a gold medal. Wow, near a Detroit from the south of Italy. Honestly, gold medal, I don't see it here. I don't see it. I don't see it, not gold for me. This is the fourth competition I've judged this year and the biggest one by far. So, can you actually really trust the medals in wine competitions? I was actually ready to sit down and start poo-pooing the process, but I was really impressed with the organization at Mundus Vini. Here's the bottom line. When you're tasting in these flights, the cream does rise. When it is a gold medal, I found that the jurors generally agree, but then you have to consider. It's all relative to what you're tasting. What kind of wines are being submitted to these competitions? And at first I wanted to say, oh, it's just supermarket wines. But my last flight on the last day, they were Barolos and Barbarescos. I saw all the Barolos, the Barbarescos that we gave gold and grand gold medals to. Are they the most prestigious, the most coveted producers in the world? No, they're not. But are they good? Are they wines that are gonna be in the $35, $40 plus range? Yes. Another tough thing is scoring for the consumer versus yourself. We gave a grand gold medal to a Kalachek Karasi. It's a very light red wine grape from Turkey. It was the type of wine I wanna drink. It really reminded me of a Cru Beaujolais and the jury fought back and forth. It was right on the border of gold to grand gold, and one person in my jury said, this wine is so impeccably balanced, we have to reward it, so we all agreed. However, if somebody was in a shop and they like humongous big red wines, they see a grand gold medal sticker on that bottle, they're gonna pick it up, having the expectation maybe that's a big, big alcoholic full-bodied red, and they're gonna be disappointed. It's all relative to what you're tasting. I still don't think a 95-point grand gold wine is really a 95-point wine when you put it in the terms of fine wines all around the world. I also don't like about certain competitions that there are different price categories. So if a wine wins a gold medal in the under five euro, five dollar range, that's not the same as a wine that wins a gold medal in the $25 plus range. So you just gotta keep that in mind. If you're at a supermarket, if you see wine that's a lower priced wine, it won a gold medal within the context of that price range. When I taste a wine that has a gold medal from a bigger competition that I know and respect, it usually ends up being like an 89, 90 point type wine. So something that's pretty darn good. Concord Mondial, I usually trust. Decanter. And now I'm going to add Mundus Vini to the list. So my final answer is yes, depending on what type of consumer you are. If you're a casual wine drinker, in general, a gold medal winner from one of those competitions is going to be pretty good. Let me know. Do you trust wine competitions? I know there's some producers, some wine writers that actually watch the show. What are your experience in wine competitions or producers do you actually like submitting? Wines to these competitions? Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.